Hey friendlies, I'm Carolyn and welcome back to my RV life. Before I get into today's New Zealand video, I have a few things I want to talk about with you today. First of all, happy International Women's Day. My whole purpose here of uh, sharing my life the way I do and making videos about my travels, my adventures, my journey, physical journey, psychological, uh, psychological, yeah, intellectual, all my whole, my whole journey. Uh, the reason I share it all is to inspire and motivate other women to live their truth, to live authentically, to dare to take space, to dare to have a voice, to dare to share their truth. And um, that's why I'm here. So I just want to give a shout out to all the women out there uh, to remember those who came before us and to draw inspiration and motivation from other women. So that's first. The second thing I want to talk about is uh, any new people who might be here. The third thing I'm gonna talk about is some information on the birds and the trees, and I'm gonna give a shout out to a couple of subscribers, and then we'll get into today's New Zealand video. So the second thing though is if you're new to my channel and you came here because you saw RV in the title, Carolyn's RV Life, and you're like, what the heck? Is this New Zealand? This isn't RV related. Well, I'm gonna kind of remind you if you're new and remind those who've been around a while, my reason for living in an RV is so that I can be free. I can be free of the high cost of living. I can be free of the materialism that was part of my old life. I can be free of consumerism. I can be free of having to be a slave to a job working for someone else that I don't like or I don't enjoy doing and live life on my terms. Going back to International Women's Day and teaching women how to live life on their terms. People live life on their terms, not just women. And so I left uh, the San Francisco Bay Area four years ago with the goal of being closer to nature not spending money on a high cost of living. And I'm not just talking about the San Francisco cost of living. I'm talking about just what it costs to be an American and an American woman, especially. I used to spend, I don't know, hundreds of dollars a month just on my appearance. And I live in an RV now because I don't want to have to live by those guidelines or rules or mores or the things that our culture values anymore. I want to be free. I want to be natural. I want to save money so that I can spend two months backpacking the Pacific Crest Trail, which is what I did last summer. And you can check out the video here or going to New Zealand if I want for three weeks, which is what I did. So that's uh, the short story about why on an RV channel am I doing videos about New Zealand? But stay tuned because I did camper van for eight days in New Zealand. So subscribe below, that's coming up next. So that brings me to the final thing because I'm, I'm talking fast because I know these intros, some people like them, some people are like, just get on with it. So uh, the third thing is that in the last video, I showed a tree and asked if, the, you know, birds in the trees. And I said, does anybody know what this bird is that I showed? So I just want to say thank you to Gina Jefferson. She's one of many. She's probably the first one, though, that I saw who identified the tree as a P-U-R-I-R-I -R -R tree. And the bird that I showed was a wood pigeon. Many of you said that. She was the first person that I saw answered both questions, so I pinned her comment. So if you wanna go to the last video, it's right there and see what tree and what bird I'm talking about. Check out that video right here. Uh, but I want to thank Gina Jefferson for uh, providing that information for me. I asked, does anybody know what this is? I, and I got the tree wrong. Um, I get a lot of stuff wrong. So let's talk about that a minute. You know, I am a one woman show. I produce my own videos. I shoot my own videos. I edit my own videos. I manage all the stuff that goes into managing a small business, taxes and books and my marketing. I mean, I do everything everything myself. I am a one woman show. And that includes, you know, the fact checking when I can and researching when I can. Um, you know, and my thing is I would rather be out doing than just be sitting here learning. I, I don't, I'm like, I, I'm not one to like sit here and learn everything about a place before I go and then go do it. Because for one thing, by the time I get out there, I have forgotten everything. I have one brain cell people. Anybody who's been following me for a while knows I kind of have a little bit of a, um, uh, 
interesting past. <laughs> um, I haven't always treated my brain that well and I've got one brain cell left and it works over time and it does a pretty good job, but there's no way I would ever remember. I mean, I could spend days researching every location that I go to, but I am a one person show. I don't have a production team. I'm not Rick Steves. And so, um, and YouTube doesn't pay enough. So that, so yeah, it's just me and I do, I don't pronounce things right. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I try, but um, I pronounce things wrong. And you're going to see in this video, I slaughter some of the ma the, the native Maori names. And, uh, and if it offends you, I apologize, but I do the best that I can. And um, it doesn't do any good to correct me after the fact because I'll never remember it. I heard recently a quote, an Einstein quote, um, that I guess Einstein was speaking at a college or he was at something speaking and some some young student uh, called him out on something that he, you know, he was really surprised at some fact that he really couldn't believe Einstein didn't know. And Einstein's response was, I knew it. But I don't spend, I would rather look stuff up than memorize it or something like that. And that's me too. I don't, I don't memorize stuff. Um, that means I might have to look it up half a dozen times and that's okay. <laughs> I like research. That's half the fun. So anyway, that's, the, um, that's just a little bit on that. I'm a one woman show. If, if me slaughtering your hometown name, you know, or mispronouncing something or not knowing your local vernacular offends you, sorry, it's not going to change. <laughs> if you're hoping it's going to change, it's not going to, this is just kind of who I am, right? I don't, um, I do. I don't spend time making sure everything is perfect before I do. And I think that's also part of the lesson of my channel. I share my mistakes, my challenges, my flubbers um, as a way to show you that if I can do it, anybody can do it. And I would rather go out and experience things and do them wrong and flubber than get stuck in the planning and making sure everything is right. Does that make sense? I think there's a lot of people like that. Like, a lot of people never move. They never do anything. Um, you know, they're in a state of in inertia, right? Inertia? Is that the right word? Um, you know, they're stuck because they spend so much time. They feel like everything has to be perfect. Everything has to be right before they move forward. And that's not me. As you know, I make a lot of mistakes. I flubber. I, I mean, I make, I look like an idiot sometimes. And I'm okay with that because I look like an idiot out here living my life. So that's, I'm okay with that. I also want to thank Hayden. Oswin on that same pinned comment. He said that the Tuis eat the berries and they get fermented in their stomach and they get drunk. So I did a little bit of research on that before I turned on the camera. And it seems that there are birds throughout New Zealand, not just the Tui birds, but also the wood pigeons and I think the cacas who eat the berries and they have a special compartment in their stomach that doesn't digest the berries right away. So they do ferment in their stomach. And there are some pretty hilarious news articles in New Zealand newspapers online about birds like literally falling out of trees. So I want to thank you Hayden for that because it was a good chuckle. It was something fun for me to look up and learn about. So all right, I'm going to get on to today's New Zealand video, which is for the birds. <laughs> More birds if you like birds. And I said in the last video that I was a few days away from my flight leaving, but uh, a lot of people thought that that meant that my New Zealand adventure is over. It's not even close to being over. That uh, flight was leaving Great Barrier Island, which in uh, the next video or two I will be leaving and heading to the South Island where I rented a camper van for eight days and explored the beautiful and amazing South Island. So without much further ado, oh, that is coming up next. So be sure to subscribe below. Subscribe. There's a little Carolyn's RV Life logo in the corner. Click on that to subscribe. Make sure your notifications are turned on so you never miss a thing. Okay, let's get back to Great Barrier Island and all the really cool birds and sights. Oh, and some really nice local hospitality. Let's get started. They say there's nothing here that can kill you. No bears, no snakes, no cougars. Nothing, nothing here that can kill you. I disagree. Steps can kill you, especially when you have a 50 pound pack. And it just gets heavier every day because I went to the store yesterday. So I've got cucumbers and carrots and an empty bottle because there's no garbage. So there's one, that's about half of what I've done already. And there's more. <laughs> 
a beautiful morning. I just had a swim. Life is good. And there are railings, which really helps since I didn't bring trekking poles. Oh, yeah. I'm walking from my campsite to Point Fitzroy, Port Fitzroy, um, where I'm going to, they have recycling. <laughs> I'm going to drop off my bottle. I'm taking the long way. I could take the road, be about 15 minutes. I'm taking the trail, which is about 50. I wanted to go to the waterfall. Colder than you think. <laughs> Not bad though. I went in for a swim. And then from there, I'm going to Okiwi. And uh, I, <laughs> 8 30 last night, I'm in my tent. I'm reading. I had a migraine. And um, I'm just laying there trying to wish my headache away. And all of a sudden I hear all these voices, like a crowd. I'm like, what the heck? And a crowd of school kids comes in. There had to be a hundred of them. And they surrounded me on all sides. And they're talking loud until like 11. And I'm like, oh, what can I do? You know, this is part of the experience. And uh, so this morning I'm packing up and one of the parent volunteer starts talking to me, the guy who camped right next to me, and uh, gave me some tips. That's why it's good to talk to people. <laughs> um, so he said where I'm heading, so a ranger told me that where I'm heading, I would be able to get free, they have like a, a barbecue set up with free gas so that I could cook. Um, and he said, he showed me a trail, a track, from Port Kiwi out to somewhere else or something and he said that if I were to camp out there in the bush where I can't be seen nobody's gonna bother me nobody's gonna say anything so I might try that but then I told him my gas situation and then a woman comes over that I didn't know she's like when are you leaving and I'm like I don't know she's like well we got a canister blah 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 and I'm like wait I'm not with your group she's like no 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 so they're going into Claris today which is where I came in which has a general store that I forgot to go to. Um, they said that's where they got all their fuel. So they're going into Claris today, so they're going to pick me up some fuel and meet me out at Okiwi. They're camped out at Okiwi. There's a school out there. And uh, so that'll be good. If I can get a canister of fuel, um, then I can go on and do whatever I want. Um, I was really just kind of heading to Okiwi to see if I could find the free gas so that I could do some cooking. Um... I'm carrying around all this uh, dehydrated food. So that's the plan today. So this trail is about 50 minutes, they said, to Port, Port Fitzroy, where I went yesterday. And uh, I think then it's a 10 minute drive to Okiwi. I might just walk it, road walk it. There doesn't seem to be a trail. Maybe I'll hitch a ride if my pack feels too heavy. Okay, that's the plan today. A week. Day. No, what day is today's Wednesday? Okay. Yeah, eight days in New Zealand. And welcome to Port Fitzroy from the trail or the track, as they call it. I'll see if they got avocados if the barge came today yet, <laughs> and if I can get an avocado. Then I'll head to um, Okiwi. So I had a nice stop in Port Fitzroy, sitting at the store, having a long espresso, which I guess is espresso with water, that's what it looked like, and a uh, energy bar I found, that was eating and gluten free, and talking to the lady who works there. And everybody is concerned about the drought. There has been a crazy drought here, and they said, 
some of the treetops that I have taken pictures of that are singed kind of orange. She said usually they're like bright, vibrant green. And of course, with all the fires going on in Australia right now, um, it's just really close to home. I mean, fires are close to home anyway. They've had several years of drought. Winds sound familiar. This is happening all over the world. It's crazy. But um, I had a nice time sitting there, <laughs> just kind of being a part of local culture for a minute. She was trying to get a hold of the lady who runs the information booth and rent a car, who has two phones, and she said it's really hard to get a hold of. <laughs> and a guy wanted to rent a car, and it's fun. I love this island. I love this island. I could see living here, I think. Um, am I backwards here? Yeah, I could see living here. Um, off grid, super friendly. You know, I like like just walking around everywhere. I don't know if I were to ever settle down. I don't know how one would become a New Zealand permanent New Zealand resident. Probably be kind of hard, but I don't know what that is, entails. How do people become expats? I don't know. I like it here. I mean, it's, cost of living is super high though. Everything is really expensive, of course, because it's on an island. And everything has to be barged in. So. Yeah, this walk is no joke. She said it was uphill, the first half. But she said, coming from the other direction, she said it was a lot worse. So, I could hitchhike, but why? I have nowhere to be, nothing to do. This is awesome, great way to travel. With all this exercise, I can eat whatever I want. Anything that doesn't cause a migraine. So I took my last migraine pill. I brought seven with me, a full prescription, to New Zealand. I might only have three left back in my carry-on. I've gone through so many because I've been eating whatever I want. And I took my last one that I brought to the island with me. Sometime early this morning, I woke up and it still hurt. And it's gone. So... I can eat whatever I want as long as it doesn't have dairy, eggs, or wheat, or a lot of sugar. Okay. Whew. I want to remember this spot. There's a breeze, it's cool in the shade. I'm at Awatia Road and Era, Kaka Bay Road and Point. I'm at the summit between Point Fitzroy and um, a Kiwi. Welcome to the beautiful Great Barrier Island, also known as Awatea, which is the original Maori name of the original settlers of this island. Awatea, or Great Barrier Island, is one of the first places that was settled in New Zealand. And in addition to having a lot of Aboriginal history, it's also known for its shipwrecks. There were a lot of shipwrecks on the coast here during the times of mining and whaling, so there's a lot of really cool stuff here. I'm here for the nature. Hey, we made it! <laughs> we had each other all the way. Okay, we made it! <laughs> Crack myself up!
destination. Oh, that's what it is. It's a fork and a hot dog. That means they have gas. Oh, wow, it's a big park. So this is where the ranger said I could probably pitch my tent, but the um, students are going to be here. All right, well, I'm going to go to the Gary and have lunch. Check it out. That's a cool tiny house. Okay, press and hold the start button until the light goes on. Oh, look at that. After a set time, hot plate turns off. That makes sense. Can you continue cooking after the light goes out? Repeat step one. Awesome. Be interesting to see how long it takes to boil water on this. place in the shade over here. Cooking over there. So I've been going back and forth. Let's see how it's doing. Nice. Very nice. One more time. This is about the fourth time. It'll be good. There's a special relationship between the Wanao community of Te Kora Okiwi and this Wao Otane Mahuda bush reserve. The Tamariki children visit here every day to play, explore, imagine, and be in great adventures. They are also its kaitiaki guardians and monitor bait stations to control pests. But the park history goes back further to the farmer who saved the remnant autocarp forest trees. Once the reserve was formed, stock excluded and predators controlled, regeneration was spectacular. Birds like the kakariki returned to join the kaka, the kaka, kaka, the kaka, I don't know, kakupa, tui, riririro, <laughs> you can read that, <laughs> pika wawaka, and many others. This is cool. Very nice. How our bird, how our trees self seed. Birds eat of a nacao tree, then the bird poops the seed, a baby nacao grows, a young nacao has grown. By Bella Smith, year four, Taden, year six, Katie, year eight, and Byron Spear, year three. <laughs> Cute.
It's nice to have coffee after the nice uh, parent volunteers of the big, huge school trip that literally surrounded me a couple nights ago at a campground. Uh, I got to talk in one of them yesterday morning and mentioned that I was drinking cold brew and that I hadn't been able to find any fuel on the island. Apparently there's only one store on the island that has the right fuel. It was the one at the Claris Airport that I should have stopped at and forgot. And they were going into Claris and they were like, where are you heading? They had like four groups going out in different places on the island. <laughs> so they asked me where I was heading. And when I told them I was going to Okiwi, they were like, we have a group going there. We will go to Clara's and we will give the, the, um, you know, the volunteer and head of that group your gas canister and they'll meet you there. And so that's what I did. I came to Okiwi Park last night and just, or yesterday afternoon, I spent the afternoon here and waited for them and they delivered a can of fuel to me. <laughs> it was really nice. So I have hot coffee, two hot meals yesterday because there's gas here that I can cook on. And that was my goal. Uh, Ranger told me that there was gas down here, so my goal was to come down here to cook, even if I didn't have fuel. But now I have fuel, so I can do whatever I want for the rest of the day. And tomorrow. Crazy bird. You hear the birds? <laughs> Let's see if we can capture the C-3PO, R2-D2, probably C-3PO. I don't know. I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. I just know that there's a robot that makes funny noises and it sounds like the bird behind me. Let's see if we can get it on film. There's a car coming. Not that. That's a big brown parrot looking thing. Hear it? I think the sound of C3PO or R2D2 was probably modeled after that bird. That's what I think. That wasn't quite it. It gets a real, like, technical robot-y sound. <laughs> Hear it? The Tui have a complex variety of songs and calls, <laughs> a lot like parrots. They also resemble parrots in their ability to clearly imitate human speech. That's pretty cool. I think they respond to that. hear that over the truck but that was a good one right behind me I'm just sitting here drinking coffee having breakfast oh hi bird oh, crap he just ran away they're camera shy I'm getting ready to hit the track walking to a You hear that? I'm walking to Okiwi Airport. <laughs> and then taking a coastal track for four to five hours. And then I head out tomorrow. So it's my last full day on the island. Hear it? It responds to my voice. Hello, birdie. Birdie, birdie. 
All right, I gotta hit hit the trail. I have about a one and a half mile walk to the airport before I even start the trail. <laughs> cool birds. So how fun has this been exploring Great Barrier Island? Well, if you're enjoying this, you're going to love the rest of New Zealand. I have the best is yet to come. So hang out with me by subscribing below and I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. Mwah.